Hello friends, today we will discuss bitmus thin surfacing. There are several types of thin surfacings like premix carpet, surface dressing, mix seal surfacing, micro surfacing and slurry seal. Today we will concentrate on slurry seal. The slurry seal is a homogeneous mixture of slow setting cationic bitumen emulsion, water, well graded mineral aggregates and additive that has a creamy fruit like appearance when applied. The slurry seals are used to fill existing pavement surface defects as either a preparatory treatment for other maintenance treatments or as a wearing course. It is a preventive and renewal treatment as substitute of surface dressing, open graded premix carpets and mixed seal surfacing for low volume roads. However, slurry seal can also be used for repair of minor surface defects like hairline or fine cracks. The slurry seal is used only on existing bitumen surface which is otherwise structurally sound. Now this is important. Slurry seal is used only on pavements which are structurally sound because these layers do not provide strength to the pavement. Surface should have satisfactory riding quality. There should be no severe distress or wide and deep cracks in the surface. Slurry seal can be used for low traffic conditions only. Slurry seal can be used for preventive maintenance as well as periodic renewals. It can also be used to treat minor surface defects like fine cracks and polished surface. It can also be used for delay of reflection cracking as cap seal and the expected life of a slurry seal layer is 3 to 4 years. There are three types of slurry seals based on aggregate gradation used. The type 1 which is a fine layer thickness of 2 to 3 mm and it has the finest aggregate gradation. Most of them are smaller than 2.36 mm sieve and it is used to fill small surface cracks which are less than 1 mm and to provide a thin covering on the existing pavement. Type 1 aggregate slurries are generally limited to very low traffic areas. Type 2 is the most commonly used a general type of slurry seal with a layer thickness of 4 to 6 mm and this type is coarser than type 1 slurry. It, it has a maximum aggregate size of 6.3 mm and is used to treat existing pavement that exhibits moderate to severe raveling due to aging or to fill cracks of 1 to 3 mm width or to improve skid resistance on the surface. And as I told you type 2 aggregate slurry is the most commonly used up to a traffic volume of 450 commercial vehicles per day. Type 3 which is also called a coarser slurry seal has a layer thickness of 6 to 8 mm and it has the most coarse gradation and is used to treat severe surface defects like surface cracks of 3 to 6 mm and also for preventive or renewal treatment. And because of its aggregate size, it can be used to fill slight depressions to prevent water ponding and to reduce the probability of vehicle hydroplaning. This treatment is suggested for traffic up to 1500 commercial vehicles per day. Now this table gives you different types of slurry seal and their applications. Type 1 which is the thickness of 2 to 3 mm and it is used for filling hair cracks on surface which are less than 1 mm wide. Type 2 which is in the thickness of 4 to 6 mm and it can be used for filling surface cracks 1 to 3 mm wide and also for preventive or renewal treatment up to a traffic intensity of 450 commercial vehicles per day. And type 3 which is in the thickness of 6 to 8 mm it can be used for filling surface cracks up to 3 to 6 mm wide and for preventive and renewal treatment up to a traffic of 1500 commercial vehicles per day. The quantity of slurry in kg per meter square for type 1 is 4.3 to 5.6 kg. For type 2 it is 8.4 to 9.8 kg per meter square and for type 3 it is 10.1 to 12 kg per meter square. And residual binder 
in percent by weight of dry aggregate is 10 to 16 percent in case of type 1 7 point 5 to 13.5 in case of type 2 and 6.5 to 12 in case of type 3. The binder for slurry seal is cationic bitumen emulsion of slow setting type 2 conforming to IS8087. Mineral aggregates of crushed stone which are free from dust, organic matter or any other deleterious substances are to be used. The aggregate should satisfy the physical requirement as given here. The sand equivalent value should be minimum of 50, water absorption not more than 2% and soundness when tested with sodium sulphate in 5 cycles it is less than 12% and in the solution of magnesium sulphate it should be maximum of 18%. The grading of aggregates which are specified for type 1, type 2 and type 3 are given in this table. For type 1, the nominal size is 2.36 mm, type 2 it is 4.75 mm and for type 3 it is 6.3 mm. And the grading for each of these types is well graded aggregate. And if more than one aggregate is to be used then they should be proportioned suitably so that to achieve the grading of the slurry seal. The filler will be ordinary Portland cement and generally the quantity of filler shall be in the range of 0.5 to 2 percent by weight of dry aggregate. Water shall be potable which is free from harmful salts and contaminants and the pH value of the water shall be in the range of 6 to 7. Additive can also be used. Chemical additive may be used to accelerate or retard the break set time of the slurry or to improve resulting finished surface. The quantity of additive if it is used shall be decided by mixed design and it should be adjusted as per climatic conditions such as humidity and temperature at site. But additive and emulsion should be compatible with each other. The design of slurry mix Design basically means to check compatibility of aggregate, filler, emulsion and additive and it will be verified through a process of mixed design. And the design criteria which are given in IRC SPHT1 are like this. Mixing time should be minimum of 180 second, consistency not more than 3 cm, wet cohesion within 60 minutes should be 20 kg cm wet stripping value maximum of 10 percent or you can say coating should be minimum of 90 percent and wet track abrasion loads in one hour of soaking should be around 800 gram per meter square maximum. Now these tests are a specific test which are conducted on slurry seal and on microsurfacing and I will explain each of these tests. The first test is mixing time of slurry seal. And this test is conducted to determine breaking time of emulsion in a slurry seal. The apparatus which is required for this test is simple stainless steel bowl, spatula, breakers, measuring cylinder, spoon and balance. So take about 1 kg of graded aggregate plus cement as required for 1 kg aggregate in a bowl. And then you add required quantity of water. If additive is also to be used, then additive should be first mixed with water and then this water should be added to a mixture of aggregate and cement. Mix it vigorously to get a homogeneous paste and then after that add required quantity of emulsion and mix it again till the emulsion starts breaking and mix loses its workability. The time required for breaking the emulsion is the mixing time. So the minimum time required for initial breaking of emulsion is reported as the maximum mixing time. The second test is consistency of slurry seal and for that a mold in the form of a fresh term is considered having a diameter at top 38 mm and diameter at bottom 89 mm and the height of this cone is 76 mm. Now on a white sheet 
you draw the concentric circles to measure the flow this the diameter of the inner circle is equal to diameter of the large opening of the cone and then each additional circle is 1 cm greater in radius than the previous one and these circles are printed on a sheet of paper or on the metal sheet and they are supported by a rigid surface then the mixture is placed in the sand absorption cone and after that the cone is removed and the flow of slurry is allowed to flow over the inscribed circles until flow of the slurry stops the outflow of the slurry is measured at four points 90 degree apart and the average is recorded as a slurry consistency in centimeter the third test is wet cohesion test and this test is used to determine the curing time of slurry seal or microsurfacing mix for complete cohesion the setting time taken corresponds to the time between the casting and setting of the material and the twisting torque is measured on five samples of the same material at appropriate intervals after casting so you need a cohesion tester here and a steel mold of either 6 mm or 10 mm thickness and that is placed on a bitumen felt base so a suitable number of identical specimens are cast and after setting of the slurry mat it is placed beneath the pneumatically actuated rubber foot of the cohesion tester then we apply a pressure of 193 kilopascal and then twisting torque is measured on five samples of the same material at different intervals after casting time required to reach constant and maximum torque is recorded as the cohesion value the fourth test is wet stripping test and this test is also simple the purpose of this test is to help in selection of compatible slurry seal system with a given aggregate and the apparatus which are required for this test is 600 milliliter beaker hot plate with adjustable temperature absorbent and height wet strength paper take 400 ml of tap water in a 600 ml beaker and then boil the water on a hot plate and when the boil and the water is boiling drop 10 gram mixture of cured slurry in boiling water for 3 minutes after 3 minutes remove the beaker from the hot plate and cool the water to room temperature and cold water can be added on the surface of the beaker so that free bitumen flows over the sides of the beaker then drain the water and remove the content from the beaker and place on a white absorbent paper or on a towel and then examine the uncoated area and report this test is similar to as we do a stripping test or boiling water test on aggregate and bitumen mixture the uncoated area is reported as the stripping value and that should not be more than 10 percent the fifth test is wet track abrasion loss test now this test is used to determine the resistance to abrasion of slurry seal layer and to establish minimum permissible bitumen emulsion content in the slurry seal mixture now this requires a planetary type mechanical stirrer equipped with weighted rubber hose holding device having free up and down movement in the shaft sleeve a flat bottom metal pan to secure a 280 millimeter diameter specimen to bottom of the pan and metal circular mold of 280 to 285 millimeter diameter and 6 millimeter thick so take the sufficient quantities of individual components aggregate filler water bitumen and additive as per design to obtain a sample of 1000 gram mix well and prepare the specimen in the mold place the mold specimen in the oven for 24 hours at 60 degree centigrade to obtain the constant weight and after that you cool the sample at room temperature and determine its weight and then test it now for testing of this specimen first you assemble the test head by screws 
and then insert the sample clamp the sample at four places to the base and after that you attach this test head through a screw tighten the locking screw and after that fill the water and cover this water bath with this splash guard and then start the machine now after the test is over remove the specimen wash it to remove debris and take the weight and report the loss in weight in gram per meter square and this should not be more than 800 gram per meter square so these are five tests which are conducted on slurry seal to design its mixture now weather limitations slurry seal will not be laid if either the pavement temperature or air temperature is below 10 degree centigrade it can be laid during a dry spell in rainy season also even if the surface is wet but there is no stagnant water on the pavement surface the quality control and specified in irc code the quality of aggregate will be checked once per source or per site the quality of emulsion one per lot of 20 ton as per is triple eight seven aggregate moisture two per day aggregate gradation two per day at site binder content two per lane per kilometer and the machine is to be calibrated once per project quantity of slurry by weight of aggregate to be checked on daily basis slurry seals are laid using a machine seal laying machine and therefore it is important to calibrate this machine first now slurry seal has three main ingredients aggregate bitumen emulsion and cement now apart from these water and additives are also used for the purpose of workability now the machine is equipped with suitable means of accurately metering each individual material and is capable of delivering a predetermined proportion of aggregate and that is the purpose of calibration of the machine that each individual ingredient should come out in exact weight and proportion so that the final mix which is coming from the coming out of the machine is perfect this should be calibrated and that is the purpose of calibration now that is how the slurry seal is laid using machines and that is the surface of a slurry seal after two hours so friends thank you very much for watching this video you can write your comment in the comment box and subscribe to my channel